All right, in this video, example two of the medical dosage introduction, and we're going to do three different problems, and it's basic one-step problems here. Many of you are going to know when to multiply and when to divide. However, to get used to doing dimensional analysis, you need to actually do dimensional analysis, and doing these basic one-step problems will get you more familiar with this process. Again, I do understand these can be solved very quickly without doing dimensional analysis, but we want to practice. And we do this because when we approach more complex problems later on in the future, the dimensional analysis will be more familiar and we can tackle those problems. Question A, let's convert 15 minutes to the correct number of seconds. Some of you may know the answer is going to be 15 times 60 because we have 15 minutes, 60 seconds per minute, 15 times 60 and whatever that is. I think it's 900. But let's set this up using dimensional analysis. 15 minutes is what we have, so I'm going to write 15 minutes, and I'm gonna write that as a fraction, put it over one. And dimensional analysis, if you watch the first video, example one, this example was actually quite a bit tougher than what we're doing now, but our goal is to multiply fractions and get rid of words. So let's take that same approach here. We are going to multiply this fraction by what? Well, we have a useful conversion. One minute is equal to 60 seconds. So we want to put our minutes at the bottom and notice we have one minute. So I'm going to write one minute. At the top, we're going to put the 60 seconds. So we have 60 seconds right here. Why do we do this? Again, this is allowing us to get rid of the words and the only word we have left is seconds, which is exactly what we want here. So to finish this problem off, to multiply fractions, we take top times top, 15 times 60, that is going to be 900. Bottom times bottom, we have one, and 900 over one, that's just going to be 900 seconds. Therefore, 15 minutes is equal to 900 seconds. Let's look at the second example. 78 inches is equal to how many feet? Some of you may know now, to divide by 12, do not multiply by 12. But I see this time and time again where people do the wrong thing. That's where dimensional analysis can really help you. Check this out. We have 78 inches, so let's put 78 inches over one. Let's use our helpful conversion here. One foot is equal to 12 inches. We want inches at the bottom in this second fraction since we have it at the top. And notice we do have 12 inches, so let's put 12 inches. That's the same thing as one foot using this conversion over here. Inches cancel out. The only word we have left is feet, which is what we want. And now let's multiply the two fractions. 78 times one, that is 78. One times 12, that is 12. And if we take 78 and divide it by 12, you can use a calculator for this. You can do some long division. But 78 divided by 12 will give you 6.5, and this is in feet, since that's the only word we have left. Now, I should have stuck my word feet over here, too. Don't forget that. Don't forget your unit of measurement. Therefore, 78 inches is equal to 6.5 feet, or 6.5 feet. Last but not least, how many pounds are in 44 ounces? So we are given 44 ounces. The abbreviation there is OZ. Let's put that over one, and some of you may know here, all we have to do is take 44 divided by 16. We'll check out how dimensional analysis will set that up perfectly for us. To get rid of ounces up here at the top, we need to have ounces at the bottom, and let's use our helpful conversion. 16 ounces is equal to one pound. And pound, you can abbreviate it LB, I don't think there's anything wrong with you using LB and then LBS is plural for pounds. Don't ask why, it is what it is. But now we can get rid of the word ounces. The only word we have left is pound. Perfect, how many pounds? Well, we're getting ready to find out. 44 times one is 44. One times 16 is 16. And then we have pounds. So if you wanna put LBS here, that will be fine. What is 44 divided by 16? That is going to be 2.75. Therefore, 2.75 pounds are the number of pounds we have in 44 ounces. Now, if you're interested, if you have to do these tests without a calculator, let's look at the 78 divided by 12, and let's see how to get 6.5. 78 divided by 12, some things we can do here is 
we can simplify this fraction or we can go straight to long division. So 78 divided by 12 with long division is something like this. How many times does 12 go into 78? Six times. Six times 12 is 72. Subtract, we get a remainder of six. Now I'm going to roll with this in decimal form. So I'm going to bring down another zero. 78.0 is the same thing as 78. Bringing that zero down to here, 12 goes into 65 times. But our answer is not 65. We have to bring this decimal up right here as well, matching everything up, keeping it nice and lined up. And five times 12 gives you 60. Let's subtract those for a remainder of zero, and now we do see the 6.5 feet. Let's take the same approach for our 44 over 16. So 44 over 16, using long division, 16, and we wanna take it into 44. So 16 times two is 32, and 16 times three is 48. So we can't go three times, but we can go two times. 16 times two is 32. Let's subtract and we have a remainder of what? 12, right? Okay, same concept here. Let's do 44.0. Do not forget your decimal here, keeping everything lined up. And now we want to take 16 into 120. Doing a little bit of multiplication over here. Let's see what 16 times seven is. Six times seven is 42. Put down our two, carry our four. Seven times one is seven plus four gives us 11. Lucky guess, 16 will go into 120 seven times because seven times 16, we said that was 112. Subtracting here, we get a remainder of eight. If you were to borrow here, this becomes a 10 and this becomes a one. So 10 minus two gives us the eight. Let's bring down one more zero and hope and pray that we get a remainder of zero eventually. Well, lucky for us, we do here. 16 goes into 85 times. Five times 16 is 80, so we have a remainder of zero. Sometimes you can do this for the rest of your life and you'll never get a remainder of zero, but we do have one now, and as you can see here, that matches that problem perfectly. And there you have it. Example two, yes, is three different examples. I'm going to take approaches here of maybe using the calculator some and maybe refreshing your memory without a calculator just in case you have to tackle this test without the use of a calculator in your med dosage course. And that's it for this video. I hope it helped.